This is Witchbase News for Friday the 16th of August 2024 ...I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week ...the attack on the Titan Thor has begun ...new bobbleheads appear in the Frontier store Frontier tees an image of the next new ship coming to the game and more. If you enjoy our videos consider subscribing to the channel and remember to ding the little bell to make sure you see all our content and community posts and if you'd like to help support the channel links to our Patreon and everything else are in the description below. Before we get into the main body of today's news in case you missed it the attack on the latest Thargoid Titan to become vulnerable ...Thor has started in earnest. As of this recording 3.5 of the 8 hearts on the colossal goopy alien mothership have fallen as the community pounds the foul beast with wave after wave of nanite laced torpedoes. At the most current estimates are saying we have around 48 hours until the Titan goes into meltdown but those estimates aren't yet taking into account Friday and Saturday night when progress is likely to accelerate significantly. Don't delay if you're looking to get your name on the dance card now is the time. Whilst the Frontier store has seen a fairly regular flow of new paint jobs over the years ...new bobbleheads to sit on the dashboard of your starships have been a somewhat rarer commodity. That all changed this week when Frontier announced not one but three new Thargoid themed ...wobbly chums to plant in your ship. The first two are dashboard friendly versions of the Revenant and Banshee surface units and the third is a model of a Thargoid Titan itself ...complete with glow in the dark highlights. Each one comes in at 8400 arcs each. To grab them for yourself seek out the ship customization options from the main menu in game or the livery section of ship outfitting at a starport shipyard. It was the best of times ...it was the worst of times. This is a story of two halves about teases for new ships in the game. Let's rewind the clock to last Saturday morning as I speak these words. A tweet appeared on the official Elite Dangerous Twitter account with the image that you can see on screen now. From even a cursory look at the ship that is partially exposed behind those only part open hangar doors ...it's quickly plainly apparent that those engine nozzles don't belong to a vessel we've seen in the game before. The tweet came with just the words quote ...oh uh you weren't meant to see that unquote and it was hashtagged with new ship. This then is our first look at the next new ship to enter the game following the recent arrivals of the Python Mark II and the Type 8. I'm going to return to this obviously important story in a moment but Frontier having openly teased visuals of the next new ship in the game is important context for the second part of the story which we'll cover off now. Fast forward then to Thursday afternoon this week Frontier announced a new partnership with a currently little known social media platform called Just About. The twist with Just About is that it's a social media sharing platform that offers to potentially pay contributors for any uploads that fit within a given criteria. In this instance the Just About Elite Dangerous initiative is offering to pay commanders real cash rewards for uploading images, video or text that is Just About Elite Dangerous using what they call their bounty system. In essence to qualify for a bounty Just About will set a challenge that anyone can choose to fulfill within a given time frame. When the timer is up the submitted content is judged on the number of comments and reactions it receives as well as how well it fits the given brief. If your submitted content is one of the winners you get the cash bounty. The challenges set can be anything from grabbing a specific screenshot to creating a guide or a snippet of information. The rewards offered and the amount of work commensurate with fulfilling the requirements of the bounty task are however somewhat oddly weighted. 
As an example, at the time of writing a guide to getting started in Elite Dangerous something that is quite challenging and complex to explain well could earn you a bounty of just $3 and you have just 2 weeks to complete it. In those same 2 weeks however you could instead choose to share a screenshot of a planet seen from space and potentially earn yourself $8 for what is a relatively simple task certainly when compared to something like compiling a starter guide for new players. I'm assuming they have their reasons for weighting the tasks in such a way but it's certainly likely to encourage a lot more screenshots of planets seen from space than it is high quality getting started guides. The point of this from Frontiers perspective is, I would imagine, to drive voluminous and quality traffic across all gaming social media feeds showcasing Elite Dangerous at its best. But we were also curious to understand what was in this for JustAbout.com and it's important at this point to understand who they are, where they've come from and importantly what they're looking to achieve. Way back in the mists of time, back when I had hair and a clearly definable waistline, people used to write things about video games or indeed any subject, put it into a magazine or other written journal and not only sell that written work for their regents chosen coin but also bring advertisers into the magazine and offer them the opportunity to get their message in front of a more curated and targeted audience. With the birth of the internet that same written and later video content was put online for those same consumers but amongst the problems with the internet from a professional content creators perspective is that firstly it doesn't work well with entry fees so you can't sell your written or spoken word as widely as before and secondly the democratisation of content creation that has sprung from it. There are now thousands of content creators, us included, creating this stuff for free with varying degrees of quality and then just posting it across any number of platforms willy nilly also for free, seriously diluting the viability as a business proposition of professionally written content regardless of the quality. With that history as a backdrop then it may come as no surprise that much of the founding DNA of the just about hierarchy comes from well respected long standing professional gaming press. The company's founder and CEO for example is Rupert Lohman who was one of the founding fathers of Eurogamer and later the Gamer Network family of brands that include sites like Rock Paper Shotgun and GamesIndustry.biz as part of their stable. The key question is what's in this for Just About. In an interview posted on GamesIndustry.biz Just About's founder Rupert Lohman who importantly hasn't worked for GamesIndustry.biz since 2020 explained how the system works saying the following Quote, If we bring in a big commercial partnership half that money goes into the treasury for that community. If content that's created generates advertising revenue and other revenues 50% of that also goes back to the creators and the people that have contributed to that." Unquote. Just about is, right now, still in beta phase having formed in 2022. Their goal is the creation of a community centric social media platform where contributing members of the community have the potential to be rewarded for their contributions. One of their standing tenets is also the exclusion from their platform at least of toxicity, something that has plagued and damaged many a gaming community since their birth. As an example the sites discussion are heavily moderated and the only emoji reactions available for members to use are of the non negative variety. If you disagree with something someone has said you can for example give an emoji reaction to their comment that represents respect of their opinion but not necessarily agreement. Think of it as something kind of like a community group on Facebook where Facebook rewards you for posting a picture of your delicious evening meal or a review of the restaurant that others find useful or valuable but any overtly aggressive or negative comments are removed in favour of nurturing a civilised discourse on the relative values of the meal or venue instead. Just about also use the content posted to their site in their own curated content on justabout.com and those posts come with appropriate attributions to the originating authors throughout. For example, bountied submissions for getting started guides could be turned into a diluted overarching guide containing key points from all the submissions received. 
It's an original way of looking at the problem from an old school professional content creators perspective of how do you join rather than beat the unbeatable legion of content creators on the internet and still make a living from content creation itself. For anyone posting guides, tidbits, fan art or screenshots and video etc of a game or subject that they're passionate about it's a way to get rewarded for what can be sometimes a considerable effort. What's more you can post it to the site and discuss it secure in the knowledge that you won't be subjected to some of the appalling toxicity that the internet can serve up by the truckload. For smaller content creators who don't perhaps yet have a large following it's a way to see rewards from your efforts much quicker than the often torturously long climb up systems like the towering YouTube algorithm of despair. This initiative will of course frontier some money so it's fantastic to see a public display of investment and commitment from the company into Elite Dangerous and it adds yet another layer of confidence into the player base for the years ahead. Now we move on to the slightly more puzzling second part of the story set against the backdrop of Frontier releasing an official ship teaser at the start of the week. Following the Just About announcement earlier in the day Just About themselves ...importantly not Frontier ...released a video chock full of Elite Dangerous footage with an exciting pumping soundtrack which contained the words in game footage in the bottom right hand side of the screen. Approximately 6 seconds into that video a ship was shown whooshing past the camera. A ship no one had seen in the game before and the words in game footage were still shown at the bottom of the screen. You can see a freeze frame of the ship we grabbed from the video on screen now. This appeared to be yet another surprising new ship tease. So surprising as it turns out that not even Frontier themselves knew it existed. After the video went live the Elite community of course noticed, social media networks and discords across the Elite community lit up but then very quickly shut down again as it was pointed out from multiple sources that the ship shown was in fact an easily downloadable generic sci-fi spaceship asset used in a stock footage piece. You'll find the offending stock footage linked below. It appears that just about themselves put the generic sci-fi spaceship over some Frontier owned video which is where the in game footage watermark comes from and then just put it out there for everyone to see. Clearly without really understanding the nature of the particularly observant and engaged community they were dealing with or the significance of a previously unseen and unannounced ship. Shortly after the news broke the video quickly got deleted from YouTube and no official word has come out of just about or FDEV about the video since. Publicly traded companies like Frontier generally have to hold an executive level group chat about opening a bag of crisps in the staff canteen to best determine timing, method of opening and of course the all important flavour of the snack. A mistimed or inappropriate cheese and onion could after all be disastrous. It stands to reason then that Frontier wouldn't have sanctioned slinging any old spaceship over their game footage and making it look like it's in game. I'm sure that Frontier Developments are an important client for just about particularly working on Elite Dangerous the latest iteration of their flagship franchise which makes the apparent lack of care and attention to detail in the video a little bit concerning. If you post to justabout.com they are able to remake and use what you've created into something of their own but with attribution to the original source. So if they've been this careless with their corporate client it does beg the question how careful they're going to be attributing something to Fred random content creator blogs whilst also potentially putting their own spin or indeed generic sci-fi spaceship over the top of it. It goes without saying if you're looking to endear yourself to the Elite Dangerous community and benefit from their passion going forward a careless move like that seen yesterday sadly wasn't the best start. With all that put away then let's talk about the actual 100% genuine ship tease that came from Frontier themselves earlier this week. As I mentioned at the top of this piece the image which appears to be concept art at the very least shows the tail of a ship we are not immediately familiar with. 
the vertically stacked engine configuration that is wholly visible is somewhat reminiscent of the Gutemeyer Imperial Cutter if you assume for the moment that we're seeing the centre of the ship. And inside the lower engine exhaust a silhouetted figure can be seen working giving a much needed indication of scale. There is the issue of whether we're looking at a large or medium class vessel. The ship does appear to be too big to be a small ship. We took some images to compare the size of the engines on an imperial cutter with a commander kneeling inside and you can see those on screen now. It is still a difficult one to call for definite however it does appear that we could be looking from the engine perspective at least at something in between the large and small engines on a cutter ergo a medium. To further compound our suspicions here there is an extremely obscured and barely visible landing gear underneath the engine that's being worked on and in its barely discernible shape there is an inference at least of Gutemeyer stylings similar to those seen on the Imperial Eagle, the Clipper and the Courier. The figure on the outside of the hangar bay is standing wearing an Artemis exploration suit. We're assuming that might also be a clue. The first new ship this year was a fighter, the next a freighter and it had been widely expected the third then might be an explorer. A medium class Imperial Gutemeyer Explorer class vessel is somewhat conspicuously absent from the game so its appearance at this stage as Frontier is filling in some blanks is not an entirely unreasonable suggestion. We know we're getting more information on Augusts Frontier Unlocked livestream and as soon as we know more we will of course bring it to you here. Are you grabbing yourself a wobbly Thargoid chum for your cockpit dashboard? Will you be attacking the Titan Thor this weekend? And just what do you think the new ship teased from Frontier is showing us? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.